The last large wall that we have left aside is the south facing one here, and it's gonna be getting a different type of siding than all the rest. We're putting vinyl on this wall. Why would we put vinyl on a house that's nothing else but James Hardy fiber cement, PVC, board and batten, and stone veneer, natural stone veneer? It's because, if you've been following along with our journey, this building is meant to attach to in the future. So we wanted a cladding that was gonna be easy to remove, not damage the cladding during removal so that it can be reused and the material's not gonna to go to waste. So vinyl really is the perfect candidate for that. And honestly, vinyl has a lot of awesome things going for it that I think people don't get it quite enough credit for. It is paint and caulk free. It's virtually maintenance free. It's really easy to install. It's inexpensive. It's the reason that the majority of houses built in America are sided with vinyl. It's because it's cheap, easy, and lasts a long time. However, it's not the most premium material out there. That's why we didn't use it around the rest of the house, but we are gonna be using it on the south facing wall where we're going to be likely taking it off here in the next five to 10 years. As a first step on the wall, we did put our Slicker Max drainage mat down by Benjamin Obdyke. This is not completely 100% necessary for vinyl. It's a pretty well-drained cladding as is, but we have the material. Another thing is this is the south facing wall and it gets full sun basically all day. So I wanted an air gap if possible behind our cladding to act as a little bit of exterior insulation layer. It's not going to be, you know, 100% effective because it's open at the bottom and the top. Air was air is expected to flow through this, but any sort of thermal break between our cladding and our interior wall assembly is all the better. Not to mention if any moisture does occur behind the siding, you know, condensation or whatever that can't drain out the siding, it's going to have a rain screen and it's really just best practice for any wall you're putting up. We have a whole nother video on the slicker if you're curious about that. The first step in putting our vinyl on is this guy right here. That is a starter strip. It creates this small groove down here in the bottom that the course of vinyl can then lock into. This little lip here at the bottom edge of the siding will lock right into that groove in the starter strip and it will keep the bottom end from flapping around. We are doing a couple non-traditional things with this vinyl siding install, first being the fasteners. These are GRK cabinet screws, inch and a half by number eight. They're a really prof low profile screw that will work really well for this. We're doing the screws, of course, because they're really easy to take back out once they're driven in without any prying or anything like that. The idea is we would reuse the slicker max on whatever siding we eventually put on here, whether it's more James Hardy or PVC sheet. Additionally, we're following the same sort of trim detail as there is on the rest of the house just because it will match and it's also pretty easy to take off. I may do some J-channel behind it. I'm not quite sure yet. I have it, but yeah, I'm just going to run the vinyl up to this edge right here that we have built out and then um, put our, our PVC trim board over top of this. To get a level start to my starter strip, I set my laser up, marked a good solid level line all the way across this wall. This is sort of my reference level line. I can measure down from this and know that the measurements should be even if my course is level. This has got a couple tabs in it so you can hang it down past the sheathing a little bit. I think I'll just go down like an inch or so beneath the sheathing. So I really don't even need the second set of tabs. I'm gonna make a mark at that figure out my distance from my reference line to there and then do that mark all the way across. That way I can just put this up against the marks and I know it's level. Just over two foot, two foot eighth inch, something like that. Vinyl, you're supposed to install loose, so you should always be aiming for the center of that nail slot and it should be able to move freely afterwards after you're done driving. It expands quite a bit when it hits the sun and this being the south facing side, it's going to be extra critical to make sure this isn't installed tight because it will warp and buckle all over the place. Definitely one of the biggest downsides to vinyl, but if installed properly, it should be pretty good. So this is nice and level. Just gotta put more fasteners in it. Well, it started raining, unfortunately, but the show must go on. I decided I'm going to actually J-channel around this door too. I have the material, I have plenty of it, so I figured I might as well. It'll hold the side, it'll hold the vinyl a little bit better here at the edge. And I have to deal with this up top too, because I just have a head flashing up there. So I'm gonna need something to cover the bottom edge of the vinyl trim anyway. So I need, I'm gonna need a J-channel up there. I might as well run it up the sides too. In full disclosure, I've never done vinyl siding before. I've literally just read the manufacturing instructions and I've been looking at a lot of different social media influencers in the vinyl siding space 
curious to learn how it's done. The siding guy on Instagram, Desmond from Canada, he's probably been the number one source of knowledge for me on doing this. I'm going to use his tips on cutting J channel. I'm gonna show it here, but full credit goes to the siding guy for this one. I held these jams up to the door to figure out my length. I'm just gonna come straight, just above the head flashing is what, I've, what I determined for length. And now I'm just gonna cut them straight all the way across. Now I'll come down and mark an inch, and I'm gonna cut a tab out of this, a slot I guess rather, that's basically a one inch rectangle right there. Oh shoot. I just realized I did this in the wrong end of the J channel. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. Stupid stuff like this. Oh wait, no, no. No, we're right, okay, we're good. Now that that's done, I'm gonna get it mounted up and then measure for the top piece. With the jam sides installed, I can measure from outside to outside of the J. That will give me my full length for the top piece. And then I'm gonna miter that top piece out of 45, both on the front and the back, fold that little tab kind of down under. I did cut the tab off here, by the way. That was gonna get in the way, so I should have just done it from the beginning. But that top piece, I'll have the miter, and then the inside tab, I will just fold down in so any water that's running in that can run right down over at the J and it doesn't get behind the J. With that miter cut into it like that, it will drop down inside the J on the jam like this with that little corner engaging inside of the fold over, I guess you could call it the hem of the jam. Now this doesn't have the slot cut out of it, but this pretend there was a slot cut out, this is gonna slide right over and this will engage with the top here. Here's the final result of that. By no means is this perfect whatsoever as it, it was my very first try, but I think it'll do. I purposely did not cut the end to a sharp point just cause I feel like it goes together better. Yeah, that's the idea. Just sort of folds over like that. I think it looks good. And there's the little folded over piece in there. All right, J channel's done. We're ready for the first course of siding. Now this is not my first course of vinyl siding. This is. <laughs> I did this one little bit of wall after some Googling, YouTubing, reading the manufacturer instructions, and I think I know it well enough to be an expert, so I'm gonna teach you now. Just kidding, we got like three days straight of rain. I did not wanna be working on this in the rain, so we are back at it now that we have a break and ready to start our vinyl siding, for real. While the stonemasons were here working the other day, I had them help me set these pump jacks up so that didn't get, on, get caught on camera, but it was quite a wild ride getting these things up. Not as easy as it looks. And major props to the guys who get it done by themselves. That's really impressive. So these will be needed as we go up, but at the ground level, I got my knee pads on because I'm gonna be doing a lot of kneeling getting this first course on. Got my handy DeWalt clamp to help support the first course. It doesn't really lock into the starter strip the way that these lock into the next adjacent course. So you kind of have to hold it up manually for this first one. The siding we're using is made by Plygem. It's their transformation series and I ordered it through Home Depot. This is a double five traditional lap. The thickness is 0 0.043 inches and this is a double five exposure. Vinyl is a lot of feel. It's a lot of kind of feeling that something's engaged or that it's in right. I follow the siding guy on Instagram. One thing that's kind of cool that I've learned from him is that he, he barely uses any tools it seems. Like he's able to do a lot with his, just his bare hands as far as removing siding and putting new siding on. All right, so that clamp is just lightly holding that supported. While I come over here, make sure I got my quarter inch gap between the end of the vinyl and my J channel. Then I've got my stud locations marked on the Slicker Max and Sharpie. So that should make it easy enough to find the studs. And I'm trying to shoot for the center of the slot. So I'm gonna sort of hold this up into place while I drive the screw in. The beauty of these cabinet screws is that they have really precise depth control. We're supposed to leave like 16th to an eighth of an inch of clearance behind the back of the screw head so that the vinyl can flex and, and slide within the slot. The screws are awesome because if you accidentally overdrive one, it's very easy just to back it off a little bit and be in the right spot, unlike a nail. The end goal of that being that you can easily slide the siding back and forth without any real resistance so that the PVC can expand in the sunlight and it does. I think a 12 foot piece can get up to a half inch longer in full sun versus cold. So it's gotta be loose enough so that it can expand, contract as needed and not warp and buckle on the wall. 
When I measure the next piece for this course, I have to remember there's an overlap we're looking for at least an inch to an inch and a quarter, I think is what the manufacturer states. And then I still gotta maintain my quarter inch gap inside my J channel there. I'm also keeping consistent which side overlaps which so that when you're looking down the wall, there's a consistent shadow line and you don't see a lot of the shadows sort of ram randomly placed. Speaking of joints, I'm trying to randomize all the joints on the wall as much as possible. I feel like that looks the best when you stand back and look at it. I don't really like the look of like the stair step lines. It's, some, it's somewhat hard to avoid without creating more waste. So I'm definitely gonna have it to some extent, but I'm trying to randomize the joints as much as possible. Now here's something really annoying that I figured out about this ply gem siding. The slots are not 16 on center. They are an inch and five eighths apart, each one of them. So literally, if you have a slot dead center on a stud, when you go over 16 inches, it's not gonna be lined up. Like 40% or so are not lined up. And I don't understand why they wouldn't just make the slots every two inches on center so that either on 16 or 24 on center framing, it would work. So I have a screw right in the middle of the slot at one end of the panel. These, both of these studs are not gonna line up right. So you're supposed to quote unquote, expand the slot. I'm just taking my utility knife and cutting out between the two slots because the studs always seem to land right smack in the middle of them. So expanding one or the other, while in a perfect world, it might help. I think I'm gonna be okay just widening two slots. I know this is not per manufacturer recommendation, but this is also a temporary siding for us and I do anticipate us taking it down in a few years. So as long as it can last that long, I will be pretty happy. But that just seems like such a silly design flaw, honestly, that you wouldn't put the slots two inches apart. That was clearly done by some engineer that had never installed the actual siding before. But if there's, a, if there's a good reason for that, please let me know. Like literally, if I put the one right in the center of this slot, burning an inch, and I come over to the 17, I'm three quarters of the way through to the left side of this slot. Someone explain that to me. Well, I got rained out again last night, so we're back here tonight. We got two courses on yesterday, but this time I got a little helper. A little I'm siding here. carpenter over here who decided to join finally. So I'm gonna have a Cut man, I'll probably be doing the hanging woman. measuring. Cut woman. Cut woman. <laughs> and yeah, that's right. Um, so it will go a little bit faster with two people, I think. Gonna be a little bit of a learning curve for Elena, getting used to uh, the whole vinyl siding thing, just like there was for me, but it's pretty easy to work with, I found. It's a really simple siding system. Elena has just informed me that she actually has installed vinyl siding before for Habitat for Humanity Project. So she actually, has put on vinyl siding before I ever have, which is pretty impressive. I'll give yeah, you that one. and I was wearing this exact shirt while I was doing it. Major so, coincidence. Major coincidence. Okay, what do you remember? I don't remember anything other than we cut it with a chop saw. Not a single thing, okay. <laughs> well, no, I do remember that you would nail in through those little things, but that's about slots. it. Through the slots, yeah. Yeah, through the slots. All right, so in general, I mean, not that you have, don't have to know this because I will sort of mastermind the layout, but we're trying to randomize all the joints on the wall so we're not stair-stepping. But stair why are those two aligned? They're not, so this is a double five profile. So one piece of siding is actually two. See how oh. this, is, this is one piece of siding. Yeah. Got it, I didn't realize that, okay. So I'm trying to stagger joints as much as possible. So the cuts we make aren't always gonna be at the same you know, dimension. I'm gonna call out measurements to you and then the overlaps matter. There's kind of a factory edge that have that notch out the bottom. See how there's a not, see how there's a gap between the hems? Yeah. That allows expansion and contraction when they, in, when they get in the sun. So you can't put just like a flat cut edge next to that. It's gotta be two factory ends. You can make a factory end with some trimming, but in general, we'll, we'll try to just trim off the correct side so that it works on the wall and we don't have to do any extra trimming. The flat cut edges can go inside here. Like this is a factory end here, but if we ever have to you know, cut one short, it can go inside the J channel. Got it. No problem. I do remember the J channel too. Gotcha. From my, from my limited experience. Okay. Why, is it, why is it a J channel? Why is it called J channel? Because it's shaped like a J. You're so smart. All right. And then we're trying to leave a quarter inch gap at the ends because the, the goal for this is you know, when you install when you install it, it should be able to slide. Okay, so we don't screw so, it in. Too. So the nail, the yeah, you see there's actually a gap behind all my screw heads. It's not done tight because if it's tight, when the sun hits it, it buckles. So if you don't allow it to slide, 
steps. It's going to look like uh, you know a roller coaster down Will the wall. Will you be? Yeah, you'll okay. see every where every fastener is holding it solid. Okay. It works out that this cut end is going to work in our J channel, and our joint here is going to be off center, so we can use this. Yes. In general, we're just trying to eliminate waste by staggering joints you and know, then using you pieces it. where they can go. Yeah. So like this is good. Okay. Should we We're clean just not going to want to put another joint like here because it'll start looking like a stair step. So remember how to engage it. You basically just pull up and it snaps. So see, I, see, feel this lip underneath of it? That lip comes up in this groove. Okay. So it should actually physically, like you so, should hear so a snapping you, you sound? Can, you can feel it. Yeah, it like clicks. Well, and then basically once it snaps up, it, ho it basically holds itself on the wall. So we're going to do that and then we're going to adjust it a quarter inch back. So we see how we have a little bit, bit of a gap there. Yep. So I'm aiming for studs. You technically, I don't even think have to hit studs, but I don't want random nails, you know, just hanging out on the walls when we're putting insulation in and wiring and all that. So the one thing I've already explained on camera is that these stupid siding pieces, the ovals are not two inches on center. They're inch and five eighths on center. So what that means is you'll hit one red dead center right in the middle of a stud, but when you get to the next stud, the stud is right through your plastic. plastic. So I'm taking my utility knife and trimming, just trimming that plastic out and making one long slot. Got it. Technically, I don't think you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to use like a punch and you're only supposed to elongate the slot but not take out all the material between them. But I don't really care. I'm just, I'm doing it anyway, because- Why, what would the problem be for- I mean, I guess it would make the slot weaker in general. Like, but it's but not- But they're gonna, all locked together. They're basically, yeah, they're basically all locked together. It's it's gonna be fine. I mean, you can yeah. just along and along and it. You, oh God! You can't do it easily. You can't do it easily with the utility knife. The knife wants to cut all the way through it. The punches looks like a hole puncher where you can, you basically put it like this and it just bites. You know, another bit. We of don't oval. have something like that. No, I did not buy that tool. It's like sixty bucks and I wasn't gonna get it. If I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna go on the top first because if you do the bottom first, this thing is really flimsy when you're trying to cut that excess piece off. But if you do it down here, then it's got more support. And that's really it. And just slices right through it. I mean, it cuts super easy. It cuts like butter with a sharp knife. So Lena was just saying earlier that she has trouble with the impact and getting screws started. So we're going to do practicing. some mandatory practice. There we go. That was yeah, better. That's not so hard. And I don't want to tighten it too much. So that's probably good. Yep. That, that one seems actually pretty tight. At a minimum, you should be able to get your your fingernail, or actually, I think it's a nickel is how they judge it. You should be eyeing up to get a nickel behind it, and yet yeah, that's just about right. And as a sanity check, you can always slide the vinyl. But remember, it's in it's locked in the below channel, so it's going to want to slide the whole entire wall. Like if you slide that piece, it's likely that the whole dang wall will slide oh. with it. Look at this vinyl siding warrior. Oh my gosh! Do the vinyl siding dance. Be careful. Make that thing. Alex instructed me to put the vinyl siding on our very sophisticated cut station, which is actually part of the scaffold. <laughs> Room 15 and a quarter. Okay, what have you been marking with? 115 and a quarter. Fact from the factory left edge. So I'm gonna leave a little bit, little mark there. And I got my big square. Mark a line all the way down. Oh, Just I'm like a scissors. Not very good at it. That flange is pretty thick, so you really gotta cut through it. It's gonna snap right there. Oh God, I'm off. Your what if we just- cut with tin snips. Is this the first time you use tin, skips, tin snips? I'm not sure, but maybe we should just use a chop saw. I think, no, heck no. But then the lines this would be prettier. Smoother. There's no dust, no. That's true. I do hate this the dust. way better. Okay, it's done. It's All not right. good, but it's done. So we're looking for a minimum of inch and a quarter overlap between the panels. That's what the manufacturer says. That way when they expand and contract, you don't see a gap open up okay, between is, them. That's about an, is that an inch that's and a quarter? That's about an inch and a quarter right there. Okay. That's with keeping our quarter inch gap here at the end. Excellent. Well, it's thundering and we have a dog out here. We thought it would be okay just to just, you know, tie his leash to this kid's steer, but turns out he needed a box to uh, feel good, so. He's just hanging out in his little supply house house. It's a kind of ironic that that oh literally God. says supply house on it. And he's, he's uh, panicking. He's in there in, as a little house, just you know, trying to dig a hole through it. And this is exactly how he would act anywhere he would be. I see his little tongue like hanging out. 
<laughs> he takes a break and his tongue just like hangs out the door. Oh. Oh my lord. Buddy, it's okay. You gotta chill out. He's good. Did you see that Mr. Beast got invited to be on that submarine that imploded? No, -uh, really? Yep, he actually was gonna go. Are you serious? He literally tweeted a screenshot of the text message that said like, yeah, next month I'm going down to see the Titanic. Somehow it fell through, but he was, he was seriously lined up to go for it. But can you imagine the chaos that would break out on YouTube if Mr. Beast was on that submarine? Honestly though, he probably looked at the sub and was like, yeah, I'm not going on that. <laughs> but can you imagine if time travel was real and like you were a time traveler that knew that the sub was gonna implode and you and you could go back in time and warn people? Like, like that's like out of a movie or something like that. Be like, do not go down on this sub. Yeah. This thing's going to go. She's gonna blow. That Kesha song. She's about to blow. All right, the storm is heating up, so we came inside. Oh, a special delivery. Special delivery. Doggy in a box. Pooch, pooch in a pouch. Mr. George. Okay, you you watch him. George. Baby, I gotta shut the doors. Oh, it's good. No. Uh, uh. George, he says, I'm scared, Daddy. We gotta shut the doors. I know. We're gonna shut the doors. Mommy will carry you while I shut the doors. Okay. We're just about ready to get started back up. We have the scaffold already. We have a couple boxes worth of siding up there and we're ready to go. Midday update. We are about halfway up the wall. Got the pump jacks rocking. And the next step is putting our next course of Benjamin Obdike on. So we got to pump up about three foot here and then roll that baby out. I told Alex, we get ice cream if we make it to the top before nine, because that's when ice cream closes. <laughs> Let's go. Doing it for ice cream. Can we do it? We'll see. Start, start pumping. Which ladder? This one, then I'll, I'll take the walk board down. You're taking this down? No, just, just, I'll take the ladder jack down. Treat it like a stair climber, exercise. One booty gets the workout. This is what I call a levitating walk board. It is completely OSHA approved. The only thing holding it to here is a little Husky ratchet strap. Nothing like entrusting your life with Home Depot brand ratchet straps. No, but seriously, we're gonna move this ladder jack up. That's what this guy is called, ladder jack bracket. I'm gonna move that up another rung or two so that it supports that board out at the edge. All right, we're making progress up here. Storms are rolling in though, so that might cut us off. But in the meantime, lunch at 20 feet in the air. Can't beat that. <laughs> this other end's gonna start getting a little bit trickier because we are on the slope now on that front 10, 12. I think I'm gonna mock up the first piece and use a scrap piece of siding to put up against the roof to get the right angle and cut that. And then I can use that as a template for all the rest of them. Just measure to the long point and then I'll use my template to be able to cut it on the bench. And this little guy is now the angle that we can slide anywhere else on a piece of siding to mark that angled cut. Then for each piece, we just need to measure to the long point, hold this little template up to it where it's gotta go and use that to cut. Show us how it's done, cut woman. Okay, so we got it lined up here. 55 and eighth to the long point, that was the measurement. We have an expert vinyl carpenter in the making. Feeling more confident by every cut. Please be safe. When I'm out here on this OSHA approved walk board, I always do try to stay leaning towards the wall because yeah, one falls smooth and I'm um, like 16 feet in the air. And that's why I stay over here. Where there is at least something next to me. Although listening to the birds chirp is really relaxing, we like to listen to music while we work and it's usually a transition throughout the day. So this morning we started out with Kesha radio. Now we're on to country. Last night it was rock. So if you have a Spotify playlist that you really love listening to, let us know what it is so that we can listen to it when we work. I love Kesha. <laughs> she's my spirit animal. No, she's my spirit animal. She's, she's both, both of our spirit animals. <laughs> about so that's an inch and a quarter okay say 136 to the long point 
Here's a close up how our sub sill window trim and the grooves in both the front and the back side of it basically integrate right with the rain screen so you can see water if any water is dripping down the window and it wicked back into this flange it would drip down get caught on top of this work its way down into that groove end up down here and then right into our netted vertical rain screen channels all the way down to the base of the wall these screws are wonderful so easy to adjust the depth of them now we're up to where we got to cut underneath this window. So here's the plan for that. I'm not going to be able to rely on just our external window trim to hold that vinyl secure. So I have a piece of this, they call it utility trim or top of wall trim. It's just a P-shaped piece of trim and this works in conjunction with a snap lock punch to create little divots in the vinyl that will reach in and hook on this ledge right here. So even after you cut the nail flange off here, just a flat piece of vinyl can be made to secure pretty well in that trim. Here's snap locks and just a scrap piece of vinyl. All it does is puncture it in sort of a linear pattern and bend a little bitty tab up. Here's the tool. It's just like a $20 tool from Malco. Basically just like a hole punch. Boom, easy as that. Now of course that would be in the top of a flat piece of vinyl and that would run across and snap right up into my utility trim. The accessories like starter strip and this utility trim aren't actually supposed to be loose like the siding is. It shouldn't be like crazy tight, but you shouldn't be able to slide it like you can with the siding. So it should be kind of snug. Here's the piece for underneath the window and I'm gonna go along and every few inches, probably every three to six, I'm gonna go along and make these little snap blocks. So if this is cut correctly, this should snap at the same time as my lower channel here. Snapped. I think so. That's not going anywhere. Good stuff. <laughs> She's not going anywhere. And if you look closely, you can see that snap lock sitting right inside our utility trim. It's a new day and today Elena wanted to take a self-care day. So I'm up here doing the vinyl siding solo again, but that's okay because we're almost all the way to the top. I made it over top of the window that we were trying to get past last night. And I was gonna J-channel around this like I did the door down below, but it just so happened that this piece of siding broke right over top of my head flashing at one of the middles of the course. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep it how it is. I even cut the little pieces of J-channel and everything that I was gonna put up here and run a channel over top, but I think it would have just looked kind of hokey. So I'm glad that that worked out just by complete coincidence, totally unplanned. Now this window is ready for our decorative trim, but I'm gonna do that on the way down. But I'm ready to jack the pump jacks up again. We gotta go up another like four feet and we should be all the way up to the top. I can finally remove the OSHA approved walk board and ladder jack because I don't need to get out that far anymore. And I don't think I talked about it yet on this video. I have on our Hardy video, but this is the top of wall detail we're using. Same exact thing on the Hardy. We're using the Slicker Max rain screen. So I wanted a place for that air to get up and out. So how we're accomplishing that is we ripped this five quarter deck board. So that's just a regular five quarter by six deck board in half. We painted the bottom edge of this with some exterior paint because you're gonna, when you look up, you can actually see that bottom edge a little bit. And then we are keeping the slicker and the siding back a quarter to a half inch, just enough for air to get past really. It's much more critical on the hardy than it is on the vinyl, but did it the same either way. But this furring strip allows us to side right up to it. It's not gonna get in the way of our pump jack scaffolding anchors. Our roof and our soffit is completely finished. So we really did not wanna have to screw these big anchors into a finished material. So these boards also serve as an anchor for that and it does not interfere with our siding. When we're all done with this, I'm gonna come back with a one by six piece of PVC freeze board or trim. We'll show you that a little bit later. And that will go right over top of this board. It'll hide the edge of the siding down to probably about here. And we'll use Cortex screw plug system to fasten that board onto our furring strip. Obviously not all of the PVC trim can go up while we have the pump jack set up because of the anchors, but we'll get as much as we can and and then the rest of it we'll do off extension ladders. We're now up as high as the pump jacks can go. I think my feet are probably at least 20 feet above the ground now. But check out the view from up here. Tough to see because of the branches, but it is a beaut. I'm in the home stretch at the top of this wall. There's no more barriers or windows or anything like that. It's just two angles at either end. So that will be a little bit tricky, but overall could be way worse. So let's crank this out. 
This is how I'm making my template for the other side. I just have a scrap piece hooked on here using another scrap piece just to get my angle. I'll line the bottom edge of this up with the long point of my other scrap that's hooked on and then just simply draw a line up. This piece wasn't even long enough to get the full template, but it'll get the job done. This back roof is a 412, so it's quite shallow. There's gonna be some pretty long points on these last pieces up here. One small trick that I've picked up through trying to locate these joints properly is estimating where the joint's gonna land on the wall without actually holding a piece of siding up there. So in our case, I have the studs marked out every 16 inches. So 12 feet is nine counts of 16 inches. So if I can eyeball where the one is, I can basically just count one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine over and where that ninth line is, I know my joint up here is gonna be. Then I look down and look for the nearest joint. In this case, it's right here. And just looking at the wall as a whole, it's kind of hard to see on camera facing this direction. But if that joint lines up like directly with one below, below it, I, def I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna do something different. Or even if it skips one, or if it's looking too stair-steppy, that's just how I'm visualizing where the joints are gonna land. We are finally in the home stretch and to reach this very top peak, how to get the extension ladder out, the big one. This is a 40 foot ladder. Luckily, I've never had to extend it all the way to 40 foot, but the top of that is probably 28 foot, I wanna say, 26 foot off the ground. I'm out of travel on the pump jacks. That ladder's about to hit the anchor bracket, so that is what necessitated the extension ladder. Up here at the top, we have a 10-12 pitch meeting a 4-12, so in order to get these to actually match these boards, it's like a weird kind of oblong angle. In fact, I had to guess and check more than once, if you can't tell. I used an angle gauge and then made like a little cardboard template and I still wasn't able to get it right, but that was looking pretty decent. I'm gonna have to do the same thing on the PVC trim and I'm gonna have to be a little bit more precise than I was with these little furring strips. And we have finally made it to the very last piece. Obviously this is not gonna be a full height piece so I won't have any nailing flange. I got a white stainless trim nail. I'm just gonna put one single nail right in the top It'll be clipped along the bottom and that nail on the top should hold it in. And then of course, I'm gonna have the PVC trim board overlapping. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue at all. And that's all she wrote for hanging vinyl on this house. We still have to do the PVC trim boards, which I still have to go cut. But in theory, this should be the last bit of vinyl siding ever put on this house because this is supposed to be a temporary cladding that will take off when we do the addition which is specifically designed to attach to this side. All right, fast forward to the next morning. We didn't get any video of it, but we put this window trim up here. It was pre-assembled. We'll have a whole nother video on that if you're curious on the details. And then we started putting our very top fascia board up. We went just until we hit the brackets where the pump jacks are anchored. Now we're going to do the bottom section of this one while we still have the pump jack up there. We can extend that little walk board off of it on top of the ladder. We'll put that fascia board up and then we're ready to take the pump jacks down. We'll finish the rest of it on ladders. Can you keep, can you pull that out? It's getting stuck when I'm coming down on the walk board. You see it? Get it away from the walk board. Okay, now you can let it down. Now this is the fun part, taking the, scaffolding poles down, literally the hardest part of these pump jacks. Luckily, I have my wing woman at the base. I'm gonna climb up, unscrew it from the board, and then she's gonna keep her foot at the base so it doesn't slide while I come down and then we'll slowly walk it down. I'm gonna keep the camera rolling because this might be interesting. Once I take the second screw out, it's gonna be pretty wobbly. I'm gonna keep it steady as best I can from up here, but just FYI. Now you just hold tight. Yeah. I'll, I'll hold it the best I can while I'm coming down. I'll let go of it. It's all you. Okay. Yep, keep your foot there. That's the most critical part so that the, that base doesn't slide. Okay, slow it nice and steady. Yep. You hold as long as you can and then, okay, just make sure that base doesn't slide. I'm gonna keep holding this up. Yeah. 
Okay, I gotta let go. Yep, you can let go. Okay, there we go. That wasn't so bad. Oops. Good. How's it fit? Is it coming flush? Now it's time for our door trim. We've already made the three pieces, put a couple pocket holes in the tops of each jam, and then this is our header. So I've kind of put the header up, marked where these have to go, and we're gonna use some Craig Blue Coat exterior grade pocket screws to screw these jams on here. Mostly this is to keep the PVC joints from opening up over time, as this is the south facing wall, so these are going to be expanding and contracting in the hot sun all day long for a long time. So by fastening these joints rather than just fastening the boards individually, there's a better chance that that joint's gonna stay tight. Like the rest of the PVC, we fasten the door trim with Cortex screws. Push it up. Where in the hell is my little mallet? And here's the finished product. But unfortunately, about four weeks after we finished this, a storm hit, the likes of which we've never seen before, we think it was a tornado actually, that destroyed a big part of our property and also hurled sticks and debris at the house at about 80 miles an hour. This unfortunately damaged quite a bit of the vinyl siding. I counted at least 12 pieces that are gonna have to be replaced, so stay tuned for a future video on this storm, which will feature the replacement of some of these pieces of siding that got damaged.